Hello, garden friends. My name is Mariano Alvarez. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, zone eight. We are today on Saturday, 420, no pun intended. And I'm gonna be giving you a tour of this section of the garden. This is the latest room that I created in the garden. It's basically a work in progress. So it's kind of messy right now. Um, but let's get going. I apologize for the noise on the street. It's Saturday, it's 420. There's a huge festival in town with different bands. So people are flocking in the neighborhood like I've never seen before. But anyways, hopefully you can hear me well through the microphone. Uh, but the first thing is um, this entrance. There used to be a fence here. You can see some of the posts that are remaining from the, the fence that was here that we took down and kind of pushed it all the way to the sidewalk and in order to gain more space and get this room going. So the entrance to this room is eventually going to be this arbor that is going to be covered by this Carolina jessamine. I planted one on each side and hopefully soon, soon enough, it will be covering this whole arbor as you can see here. So we'll see how long it takes, but I'm very excited about it. Now, if we start walking, okay, in the entrance to this new room, I have a couple of things here. I have a couple of cardinal flowers, and then there's a new hosta that I just planted called Minuteman. Uh, right next to it, this, there's this, um, Trident Maple. This one is called Bling Bling. By the way, this area is very shady. It's under, it's kind of like a woodland area. So the colors don't last too long and everything turns into a kind of like this boring green, if you will. But this Bling Bling was a uh, very yellow uh, a couple of weeks ago when it started to leaf out. And I'm just, since everything pretty much is on, in a pot, I can play around with things and move them to more sun if needed. It's just an ongoing experiment here. Right next to it, uh, you can see there's this uh, Carolina Jasmine that I was talking about. A, an Elysium, Elysium Banana Peel, which is an evergreen you've seen in my other videos. And this one is Noel. This is a pretty fantastic little tree. The colors are fading, but uh, if you look at one of my other videos, by the way, uh, you can follow Japanese maples and conifers, that group on Facebook. I post a lot of pictures there, but you can see the vibrancy of these colors. They started being like purple and pink. Now the purple is becoming green. But Noel is a very, very fantastic little variety here that I have. Now, if we cross the path slowly to the other side of the arbor, um, I have a couple of native azaleas that are past their bloom time. And here's another still bee. These are great perennial plants for the shade that are going to give me a show in the summer with some nice flowers. This is a variegated Jacob's Ladder. Really beautiful plant. Um, I have a couple of them. I like them a lot. The foliage and the little blue flowers are really, really nice. Uh, not sure I'm gonna be stopping on every single maple since um, there's a lot of them that are turning green so quickly. This one is Kawahara Rose. Um, next to it is this pretty large Fatsia that is gaining in size. Love the evergreen and the color of the, or not the color, but the shape of the leaves is wonderful. <clears throat> and right below it, there's a small Shishigashira camellia sasanqua. This is a very small, kind of like bushy, evergreen shrub that has a lot of um, 
a lot of pink flowers in the fall. <clears throat> Behind it, there's this Japanese maple called Sir Daemon. Sir Daemon is famous for its uh, bark color. As you can see, it's very red and it's very close to my bihu and my other coral bark. So in the winter, it's very nice to be out here and see all these different color bark trees. And they have yellows, red, purples, greens. So Sir Damon is famous because it retains that uh, bark color much longer than a Sangokaku, for instance. Sangokaku right now for me, it's kind of brown, the bark, but you can see for Sir Damon, even though it's getting hot and humid, still retaining that red bark. All right, uh, this guy here is a Japonicum. This is Emmet's pumpkin. Beautiful, large leaf. Um, you can see it's called Emmet's pumpkin because of that orangey color on the leaf. They are very large. In the spring, it gets that tint again right there. And in the fall, it, it's obviously where it shines also as well, being a Japonicum. It gives you all of those wonderful reds and oranges and yellows. This little area here is full of hostas. I don't know the name of the varieties, but I have a bunch of them. This one right here is an Osmanthus, Osmanthus fragrance, or tea olive tree. This is the... Um, the orange kind, it hasn't bloomed yet, uh, but it has this, uh, instead of a regular white flowers that the regular tea olives give you, this one gives you that orange flower, which is very showy. Right next to it is this, uh, the fountain. As you can see, it's running. I have it surrounded by different camellias. So that evergreen, color of the camellias around the fountain. It's, it's very good and it looks great year round. And then you get the bonus of the winter flowering that camellias gives you. Um, I just planted this, this hosta, which I love. It's something William, something like that. Sorry, I don't remember the name, but it has like this blue and green uh, variegation that is beautiful. And you can see next to it, this is the Sangokaku. If we compare it with um, with the Sir Damon, I it's not very red uh, the branches and the limbs, whereas Sir Damon is keeping that redness. This was red in the dead of winter though, but Sir Damon gives you that interest year round. This one is a Japanese Styrax, uh, snow or fragrance, snow bells or something like that. There's a couple of flowers still there, but most of them are gone. That's a beautiful thing that I'm basically letting it cascade in this tall pot all the way to the floor. Um, this one is called Dulce. Really beautiful leaf shape. But again, it, it turned green so quickly. Dulce, by the way, uh, since my first language is Spanish. In Spanish, dulce means sweet. In Italian, it's dolce. In Spanish, it's dulce. So that's your lesson for the day. Um, anyways, my Spanish and my English are kind of iffy right now, being here in the US for so long. But anyways, this one is a hydrangea, a lace cap hydrangea. You can see it's full of blooms. It's getting ready to pop in the next few weeks. And if I go back now to the, um, to this bed that I created, this another Elysium or Anis plant. Um, some irrigation going on here. And this is Shinju. Shinju is a great tree, especially later in the summer. It gets this olive green and the 
I mean, it's a very rough looking leaf. It gets thicker and the olive color in the summer makes it give you or gives you this rough appearance appearance rather and uh, I really like this one yeah. for some reason um, it's tall and skinny as you can see and that's Shinju for you all right and here's kind of like a mess of different plants I have a lamium there. I really like the color that it provides in this shade garden. And it's under a, a camellia. They're all recovering from the freeze of 2022, by the way, these camellias. And of course, there's a bunch of different hostas, as you can see. There's a plain green. There's a blue one there with cool little edges. There's another one here with some white variegation and right next to it there's this variegated Leucothoe I think it's called, uh, actually I don't remember what it's called Forgive me for that uh, More Hasta and This one is Shin de Shoju which was fiery red in the spring now it's turning into green and behind it is this yellow leafed hydrangea called Little Honey. I have two, one in the shade, I'm experimenting, one in the shade and one in the sun, just to see how they fare and compare them later on. If I keep going, this one is one of my favorite reds, or actually it's purple, maroon now. This one is called Umegae or Umegae or something like that. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Um, but this, what can you say about this? It's really beautiful, as you can see. Very dark color leaf with some um, kind of like very uh, kind of like bright veining on the leaf. It has such a great posture if that makes sense next to it is a soft caress mahonia i covered that one i have like two of them I covered that one in another video this one is another elysium called pink frost as you can see coming out of winter you can see some pink on the variegation when you do this to the leaves it gives you that anise type of aroma um, which is actually pretty nice and the the, the flowers are star shaped like all the other elysiums the very very cool little tree and it's evergreen so highly recommended this one japanese maple is called orisuru and it has some very cool variegation as you can see it has splotches of white in a lot of places I like that it has quite a bit of it this season for me whereas other ones are kind of disappointing this one has very interesting variegation this spring so Orisuru all right if I move on there's another Lamium there to add more contrast with the brighter leaves have a fatsia against the fence moving on this one here is called omato it has really big leaves and really big actually everything here like not just the leaves but let's find a seed you can see how large the seeds are uh, and they're showy too, that red of the seed against the leaves make a good contrast. Let's see if I can find another one. Yeah, there's a couple of them. They look like flying boomerangs or something. Really, really neat. There's more there, more there. And I'm excited. Um, I 
collected a few seeds last fall and for the first time I got them to germinate. Not a lot of them, but that's progress. This one is called Red Flamingo. This is not a Japanese maple, but it's snark, uh, snake bark maple, rather. Which very, very cool variegation. Let's see if I can get one to show here. See how variegated it is. It is, let's see if this one right here, very interesting variegation. And it has this red contrasting uh, colors as well. So the whole thing is fantastic. This is really, really amazing. It's called snake bark because look at the bark it's it has those strikes or stripes or strips of color there um, it's still a very young tree but when it gets some age it's gonna show off uh, that bark a little better really neat tree red flamingo just Keep that in mind, if, if you see it, get it. This one here is Myrte. I have two of them, one more in the sunny side area, or gets more sun at least than this one. Um, this is a very cool tree, regardless of the color. The, um, the leaves are really, really, really incredible. Check that out. It's a fantastic little tree. Highly recommend that one. I got two of them, which is not saying something. Then to the right of it, there's this uh, really cool, <laughs> as you can see, I love variegation. This is a cool clethra called Takeda Nishiki. Very interesting variegation in these leaves which makes a very nice pop of like white or cream colors in the shade corner of my yard. To its right, there's this one is called North Wind. I have it in a pot. It has grown quite a bit. It's very graceful. Again, this is one of those that there's something about him that you don't know where it is, but it's really, really amazing. Yeah, I can look at this tree for a long time. It's, it, it's really, really neat. So I'm going to start picking it up here. Uh, we built these kind of like, we call them bleachers. You can see it's a way for, for me to just Put more ma maples and I keep arranging them, finding them uh, best location, giving some conditions on the size. So it's always a work in progress. I'm just gonna go real quick. This one is called Jubilee. Uh, we have Tana here. Tana has very interesting star shaped leaves. Uh, this one is Wilson's Pink Dwarf. It was super pink, but now it's not. And now this one, it's pretty cool. This one is Okushimo with the curled leaves that look like there's something wrong with the tree, but that's how it is. Down here, this red one is Boscoop's Glory. Don't know much about this one. Variegated one here, or the reticulated one here is Ruby the Sophia. I have here Karasugawa. This, I had a small one that died on me. Had a, a lot of variegation, kind of like Oridono Nishiki. But um, this one is not showing anything this year. Hopefully, maybe next year. This one is a cool tattoo. It's one of those Mikawa type varieties. I, I like the shape. It's uh, very narrow and going up. 
very cool tree. Next to it is this one called Naruto. It's a trident that has the leaves curling up. So they kind of look like paper planes or birds flying. I know it looks kind of like sick, but it's not. I mean, it has, that's just the way it is. <laughs> but it's interesting. I like different things that are different and that one for sure is different. This one here is Villa Taranto. It's a uh, linear, linear leaf type of tree. It's kind of like Cotonoito, but it's red when it comes up. Uh, up there is a Murakumo. The top part has some variegation. Not a lot going on right now, though. Moving on, this one is Itami Nibluki. I do like this one. It's, uh, it's a little bit different. The variegation is fading right now, but you can see um, you can see some out of it still. I do like it. Next to it is Kotobuki. This one is supposed to be variegated as well. It's not, give, not giving me a whole lot. You can see some variegation there, but I think it should, it's supposed to be pinkish and white and all that, but um, not getting a ton of it. Maybe next year. This one was a surprise for me, the next one. Uh, Elm, Elmwoody or Elmwood. Again, now it's kind of faded, but it was spectacular in the spring when it first came on. Um, I have a short that I made of it, I believe. If you want to find it with better colors, it's there. This one next to it is Kansai as Asegurasu or something like that. Not much to talk about right now about it. Down here, this one is a very interesting one. This one is called uh, Maltese Cross. I'm not sure what kind of maple it is. But if you look at the leaves, they do like they they do look like a Maltese cross. And there's a little bee there. Um, but yeah, it's a very unusual leaf shape. So I'm looking forward to seeing what it does as it matures. Bunch of crosses here in the leaf. Maltese cross. Moving on, this one right here is a Hubs Dwarf, similar to a Mikawa. This one is Angel the Prince, not looking great for me. So I don't know if he's going to make it, but it doesn't seem very happy. Not sure why. Next to it is a Goshiki Kotohime. This one was the first one for me to leave out this season. It was beautiful orange and, and yellow. Usugumo, bad wing maple. This is so showy. Every year, it doesn't fail. The bad wing maple. Right below it, there's a trident maple called Aizuma Nishiki. This is supposed to be variegated, but look guys, that's all I got. <laughs> that's the variegation that I'm getting. Not very impressive to say the least. This one here is called Shikeri, another red one that I like. Uh, to the right of it is Otaha. Non-descriptive right now. Um, this one, it doesn't seem like it's doing too good either. It's Hana Sukasa, sort of like a butterfly maple, like the sorry, like the butterfly variety rather. But it's super thin right now. Uh, not sure if it's gonna make it. All right, uh, to the right is. Uh, Sudo no Mai. 
supposed to be variegated again I'm not getting a ton of it and down below it this one is a hagaromo it's a uh, has that feather shape leaf it was very orange red a week ago I'm a little late with this video so I apologize but I've been shooting these other videos so lots of them are past their prime this one is Sagara Nishiki this very cool dwarf is Miyasama Yatsubusa it's a dwarf trident maple really really like this one next to it is the infamous miss piggy it has a very unusual way of growing its leaves they're all bunched up and the petioles are very short which makes it unique this one is a japanese princess totally green now um, but it's another one of those Mikawa types. Right next to it, there is this a Autumn Moon. This is one of the latest ones to open, and it's still in the process of opening. So you can see there's leaves that are emerging still. Little conifer here and let me see what i missed this one right here is julia it's a um, another reticulated maple let's see if i can get good light you can see the reticulation there it's a pretty beautiful tree when it comes up on spring the greens that it shows on the leaves are very vibrant really like this one Next to it is a uh, blue moon. It's kind of similar to uh, moonrise, but with smaller moon shaped leaves. Anything that has this leaf shape, I'm very into it. Really, really, really likes. You can see how, how it shows from the distance, the lobes in the angles and the leaves, everything. This one is called Murogawa. And I think its claim of fame is that it does have that red and green at the same time. It was more impressive a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> Here, this is, this is a spice bush. I planted this one because I want to attract more pollinators. This is a host plant for, I think it's swallowtail butterfly. So I have a couple of host plants. Uh, the idea is to bring more pollinators to, to my garden. <coughs> Excuse me. This is one of my favorite hostas, uh, Regal Splendor. Beautiful hosta. Love the, the curly leaves and the color okay i'm gonna pick it up i know it's getting to almost 30 minutes this is mystic uh no i can't remember what the name of it is uh, burgundy jewel sorry it's a circinatum uh, i think these are more native on the northwest uh, oregon and washington state so they're not doing that great here, but it's making it. This one is called uh, Tendo. Don't know much about this tree. There's not really a, <clears throat> any distinctive quality, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much. This one is a small Mystic Mikawa, another one of those Mikawa type of trees. This is my small um, dancing peacock or aconitifolium. 
I have a very large one that is going to come up in another video. Now this one is Bergen, uh, sorry, this one is, uh, what's it called, uh, Blushing Beauty. So it didn't give me a lot of color this spring. So hopefully next season it will. I might move it to more sun. It's supposed to have this flushing uh oranges and reds in the in the spring which i didn't see though this one is mikasayama don't know a whole lot about this one but um has a cool shape of to the leaf moving on this is bashful i always like bashful uh, but it's the slowest one to open you can see it has that kind of like crinkly look to it. Um, this Magic Moon is similar to it, you know, which I'm after that one. Um, but for now, I'm satisfied with this bashful. It's hard to find though, but it's worth finding it. Down here, I have Ruby Red or Aka Omote. Oh, this is another one of those fall trees that it shines during that time of the year. Now this one, it's kind of struggling. Incognito. Uh, not sure what to think about it or of it. But if you have one, let me know <laughs> what to do with it. Maybe it needs more sun. It's tall and skinny right now. This one is uh, Moon Shadow, one of my favorites, <laughs> again, just because of the, the shape of the leaf. And there's a cool song with that name, Moon Shadow. In the, in the fall, all of this is super vibrant yellow. Really, really like this one. <laughs> to its right, we have a funny looking lily pad as you can see <laughs> it's very f funky looking but it's another mikawa type look at the <laughs> the branches going in four different directions it's very interesting <clears throat> moving on this is johin it's losing its spring color this bronzy color from spring and it's gonna turn soon into into green but it's a lovely tree johin next to it it's this eagle claw japanese maple i think it's pretty obvious why it's called eagle claw the leaves kind of resemble that I do like this one a lot. I'm trying to stacking up, stacking it up so that it doesn't lose any height. And this one is one of my many favorites. Again, this is uh, Naguri Nishiki. It's a bad wing maple that is almost totally white. Beautiful. To its right, there's this uh, Beijing Beauty Mahonia. I really like Mahonias, evergreen plants with beautiful flowers. This is a Yama Nishiki. This year I didn't get hardly any variegation, so I'm just gonna skip it. If I move on here, let's do a quick turnaround. Another Elysium. This one is Osakazuki. This is a fall color type of maple. It shines in the fall. There's more hosta. This one is getting eaten by something. This one is a green maple. So it was just a seedling. Super red in the fall. So even though it's a seedling, it shines in the fall. 
There's epimedium here. I love epimediums. A leopard plant. A huge um, that is taking over the place. This huge hosta. I think it's an empress wool. One of those big hostas. A lace cap hydrangea called Mariesii. I think. Um, really showy leaves. This maple is Takesimense. Another one that shines in the fall. Moving on, this lace leaf maple weeping is Isley. Followed by a Hucara to kind of break the greens. And then here is a pink filigree. You can see it's fading right now, but it was super pink and kind of like an explosion of color a couple of weeks ago. Uh, what else do we have? We have more epimediums. Let's see if I can capture a flower of these epimediums. They're really cool looking. Uh, there's one there. But yeah, I love epimediums. The, the flowers look like, kind of like spaceships, little spaceships or little, <laughs> little birds. This one is Morton. Morton. It's a, it's a hybrid. It's a cross between two species. Not a lot of people have it. But if you come across it, I really recommend it. I mean, look at those leaves. Um, they had that sort of reddish edge to it. And in the fall, it's just beautiful. Uh, oranges and yellows. Next to it is this Japonicum called Atari. As all Japonicums, this one shines in the fall. Uh, and behind it, this bushy looking thing of a maple is uh, Sharp's Pygmy. A very, very full maple. Okay, I have another Fatsia right here. And just to wrap it up, this one is a Peaches and Cream. This one really impressed me this season. Again, see if you can find the short that I made for Peaches and Cream when it was like extremely pink it's still attractive though but it was really really showy a couple of weeks ago here it's a kiyohime still has some red tint on the edge of the leaves but um, again it's past its prime by now and here it's a Sensu, Acer Shirasawanum Sensu. Let's see if I can get some better picture here. Cool little tree. And right behind it, I don't know if I can reach it, this is Mikado. So both Sensu and Mikado are really good trees to have. I think I say that about every tree. Uh, what else do we have? And to finish here, we have a small Mayday that was totally yellow a couple of weeks ago. That's another one of the Mikawa types. And here it's this one is called Abyss Weeping. This is a Japonicum that, again, just like any other Japonicum, makes a great display of color in the fall. All right, this is the longest video so far. I kind of knew it was going to take this long, but it's just because there's so much going on in this very small space, as you can see. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, hopefully you enjoy this and it wasn't too heavy to watch but um, next time I'm gonna be a little more succinct 
You all have a great rest of your day and thank you for watching. Make sure you like the video. Bye.